Welcome to Monet Cafe. Come on in the studio with me as I give a real-time lesson on light, how it behaves. And this tutorial is actually for both my Monet Cafe channel here, where I give free art lessons all over the world, and for my patrons. And I do usually have a little extra content for my patrons, but in this video, it's all available here. I will be providing the reference image I use just for my patrons though and if you'd like to become a patron it's only five dollars a month at that link above and it really helps support this channel Monet Cafe. And here's a little sneak peek into my Patreon page. We have things like drawings for free painting giveaways. I give color perception tests. Often you get the full video when you're a patron access to my reference photos, and lots more fun. We just have a great group. So if you'd like to become a patron, it supports Monet Cafe, helping me to make this channel better and to provide more free lessons, again, all over the world, which is awesome. Okay, let's get started with this particular lesson. You know, I'm really fascinated with these flowers called cone flowers, I believe also called echinacea. And they come in various colors, even though I've typically painted them in pink like I do here, but I'd like to try some of these other colors. And here's a little studio quick tip. I love to provide these in my Patreon page. But um, this little tray, it's an appetizer tray, I got at the dollar store, one dollar. It's like a color wheel, and it is a great way to hold your pastels while you're working. The painting in today's lesson is a small painting, more of an artist trading card size. And just so you know, I have a playlist in this YouTube channel with all kinds of lessons on painting small. So check that playlist out if you'd like to learn more about that. I captured some video footage of this honeybee in my backyard. I am just drawn to these magnificent creatures. And yes, I am going to be adding some little bees in our coneflower painting. As I get started here, I'd like to give you a quick supply list. This is just a small sheet of Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. Feels very much like sandpaper. I love Sennelier. It's a little coarse and rough. Some people might not like it as much as you art, which is smoother. But I happen to love Sennelier Le Carte because it is... <clears throat> uh, lends itself towards a more painterly style because of its texture. I also like because it's a card, it's a little bit thicker than you are and it doesn't warp. But here's a little note. Do not add water to Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. I know with a lot of other pastel surfaces, they are water friendly. You can add watercolors as an underpainting or any other water-based product, but not with this Sennelier Le Carte pastel card. And as you can see, I'm just using a charcoal pencil, it's kind of like a medium value charcoal pencil, to sketch in really suggestions as to where these flowers are. I don't have to hold hard and fast to this as I start painting, but uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and get in your general flower gestural quality, I like to call it. I always think of flowers as having personality. And again, I'm talking about considering the light. Really, this lesson's a little bit more on light and shadow. I'm going to talk about how to give that um, sense of light and how to not overdo it in your painting. I've had a tendency to do that. But again, I'm getting the gestural quality or the personalities of these flowers and how they're reaching and how they're turning. And uh, that actually too is that's part of another lesson I did on the art of randomness you don't want them all to be exactly the same so I give a little variety as I work and I'll try to talk about that as well and keep in mind these are just shapes I love to talk about the concept of painting large to small I think that was the focus of my last lesson but we are painting shapes and actually it's okay if those shapes aren't in um, a strategic um, mold for the flower just yet. I think it adds to the painterly style and everybody's talking about wanting to get that impressionistic style and I think this is one of the keys to that is to suggest things, keep it very loose early on. It's okay if you've painted outside the lines a bit because too much fine tuning early on is what causes your painting to look static or rigid. And so we're giving that really soft and moody beginning to the painting. And uh, again, it's okay if some of my shapes aren't exactly right. I give them more um, definition is the word I'm looking for as I work. And all I did here was use a medium value pink. I believe that was either a Jack Richardson, the, the lighter value there, or a Rembrandt that I used. And then a darker value for the actual centers or the 
top parts of those flowers. Now, let's talk a little bit now, like I said with this video, on light and shadow. Look at the reference photo up there. You see how those flowers in the bottom left corner, look how dark they are. So sometimes we have a tendency, and also the one that I'm working on now, look at that flower, look at the left side of that flower, um, it's really more in shadow. So I'm using this purple to go ahead and block in and get an idea of where my shadow is. Again, this lesson, consider the light. And speaking of that, where is the light source? Well, you can usually get an idea of that by looking. Look at the tops of those flowers. You see the light is on top, shining down, and a little bit over to the right because most of the shadows under the flowers are on the left. So the light source is upper right, and we want to keep that in mind with the other um, all of the, really the whole painting as we're working is that the lighter things are going to typically be on the right side rather than the left side. Now I noticed too a lot of these cone flowers, like the one I just did, and um, I, I did go ahead and put in darker because if you've watched a lot of my videos, we need a base. We need something for contrast. So a lot of times you put down a value that is darker at first than what it's going to be when it's finished. The final, of course, is going to be those brilliant pinks that, where again, where the light is, they're being reflected uh, by the sun. And, but I still have to get something dark down to lay the light on top of. Otherwise, it's just kind of flat. If I just laid the lightest value on top of that kind of beige Sennelier Le Carte, uh, it wouldn't have any vibrancy. It wouldn't have any way to contrast against anything. So that's why we put the dark down first. Now that's again what I'm doing right here. I am, again, I just made them suggestive before. Now I'm going in and getting more of some dark values in. And if you notice on those cone flowers, the darkest part of that, the centers of them, is down right where that um, that round ball shape kind of sits down into the petals. That's the darkest part. So I'm just going ahead and getting it in there and then I'll round off the tops of them with a little bit of a lighter value. And in this case, the sun, I love how it just illuminated the tops of those, uh, the centers of the flowers with almost like a fiery red. Um, now, okay, before I get too detailed, this is a lesson to myself and everyone else, it is don't get so caught up on any one thing with detail before you work the overall painting. I happen to love working the overall painting before I get too fussy. That's another tip into keeping a painterly style. There's something about, if you just, like if I started working real specifically on one of those cone flowers there and um, just got it super detailed, I can pretty much guarantee you the rest of my painting is going to look tight. I don't know what it is, but you've just got to keep working big and general and overall soft and impressionistic to finally getting into the, the details. I think one thing too is when we start working on details too early, we have a tendency to make everything detailed. And that's a huge lesson in keeping a painterly style or just art in general is we don't want everything detailed because all of a sudden your painting loses its focus. I mean, what do we focus on? We want to preserve and reserve the areas to be detailed that are of the most interest and gradually make things more subtle in the rest of the painting so that, or you don't have to make them less subtle, you just literally have to give them less detail. Don't give them a lot of focus or attention and they will, uh, by nature, become more subdued and uh, lost in the painting rather than becoming the main focus. So I am adding now some of these darks. Notice how I'm just um, uh, kind of blending it over some of the flowers down below uh, and working it around some in a way. And we need that darker. We know that values get darker as they're in the foreground and also in deep grasses. So I'm trying to give that, again, we got to get our darks in before we add the lights. If I just added uh, light blades of grass there, they're going to have nothing to contrast against. So we've got to get our darker values in. I'm even doing a little bit here with this um, kind of medium value cooler green, working all around the flowers. And again, this is giving uh, more of that 
painterly feel as I'm just scumbling colors. And if you don't know what the word scumbling is, it's it's almost it's almost a little bit being messy and just a little gentle touch of blending and mixing and um, keeping a, a random pattern to things. Now I know I do want to keep a little bit of that lighter um, suggestion. Notice this painting doesn't have a sky showing. It has like grasses in the background and but I still wanted to lighten them up. I wanted the flowers to have a lighter contrast behind them and also I know I'm going to be adding a bee later and I just wanted to have a little bit of a different differentiation between the background where the lights hitting it more and also um, that is exactly what happens with values as things recede into the distance they get lighter and cooler in value oh sorry for my hair sometimes my crazy hair that you know when your hair starts to get older and especially when you start getting a little gray in it it sticks out like wires <laughs> I've got to learn to tame that back and I have it in a ponytail but I, I need to put a band around it sometimes but again co colors get cooler and lighter in value as they're in the distance so we have the power as artists even if a photograph doesn't show it that um, well represented um, we can force that with the power of illusion by making our background a little lighter in value and a little cooler in color now is where I'm going in I didn't want to get my real bright brilliant pinks on there yet I really like this new pastel it's almost kind of a mauve pink and so I'm going in and kind of uh, redefining some of my flower shapes again I'm not getting too specific here I am just um, working on them in a very general way and I'm looking at my reference photo I've had a tendency in the past to uh, accidentally again this is back my one of my last lesson lessons on the art of random we have a tendency to kind of do patterns and do things all the same so I try to resist the urge now to have my flowers all exactly the same or facing the same direction and even though in the photo a lot of them they are in general reaching towards the light again the focus of this video considering the light I think all of our um, plant life and um, nature seems to reach towards the Sun and um, so they are having that general expression of reaching up but they do have still some little subtle varieties all right now let me talk and that's what I want to keep is some of those differences with the flowers I want to talk now about why am I adding this purple um, a little bit darker in value down on in these flowers because I'm not sticking to the reference photo exactly by the way as you can probably tell um, because I want to remember that there are some things in shadow we want to consider the light and consider the shadow since the right light is on the upper right hand side I'm making things in general a little bit more shadowy on a little um, uh, darker in value on the left side and also down in these flowers that I'm going to bury a little bit. They're not quite as buried by other things in the reference photo, but that's what I'm picturing in my mind is that I want those, first of all, I don't want them to steal the show from those three main flowers that I kind of have in the top. So I'm pushing them uh, back and down a little bit uh, as I work with darker values. And um, now I'm just kind of carving out the shape of these I like how the the cones or the tops of them are almost almost rectangular shaped you know you could get away with doing these rectangular rather than um, making them a more more spherical like I'm doing um, but I'm really just kind of making a little uh, arch kind of over the top again I don't want to get those brightest values yet I'm going to reserve that and I actually really kind of like the colors that I've got going on here sometimes I I keep working a little too long this particular painting was a bit therapeutic for me I had been <clears throat> probably hadn't painted in a day and uh, I was really missing it my other business is a bookkeeping business and it's tax time now so I've been having to use the other side of my brain uh, which I I actually kind of kind of like I like numbers and math and stuff like that but uh, I needed my creative time again so I just put up that's why I put up this little piece of Sennelier Le Carte. I knew I didn't have time it was a little later at night and uh, I just wanted to express myself creatively and I may I suggest too that in talking about painting small and a busy life it's uh, again I share that a lot when I do videos on small painting 
a tip is to, I took some of the Sennelier Le Carte Pastel card and I cut it up into um, these artist trading card sizes. Now these here are, the one you're seeing here, is a little bit bigger than artist trading card size because I gave it a little border, but sometimes I don't mess with preserving the border. I just go ahead and start painting. Um, so cut up a lot of these. That way when you have that limited time, you can just grab one of these little pieces and just go to work, not waste your creative juices on trying to cut up paper. All right, now here is where I'm just gently representing that light that's hitting the tops of these uh, centers of the flowers from the upper right. Notice how I just kept it a little bit more to the top right. Now, I decreased the intensity. I think, I, yeah, I realized those bottom flowers, that right there was a little too light because I'm going to keep them buried in the grasses. So I need a value that's a little more dull. I think I even... Yeah, it, that gives a sense of the light, but it's not quite as bright and intense as those brilliant reds that were on top. I think I even darken them up a little bit more as I'm working. Yeah, see, I knew they were going to be too bright. They were going to get too much attention. We need some things to be less noticeable. You know, I love... Um, you know, I know I lose subscribers sometimes, and I've noticed even on my Instagram page, I lose followers when I talk about the things of the Lord, but sorry, I can't help it. Uh, I was going to say, it's kind of like in, in the Bible, there is talk of all of the parts of the body's w body working together as a whole to create this beautiful um, creation made in the image of God, and the whole body is a wonderful piece of art. However, not every part of the body gets the glory or gets the attention, you know, such as you could have the little toe saying, I want to be the hair that gets all this notice that, you know, somebody's got gorgeous hair, or you could have something saying, I want to be the eye. But meanwhile, every part is equally as important because it works for the whole beautiful resulting image and um, magnificence at the end. And that's how a piece of art is. We have other things that are more subtle, like these flowers that are not gonna get as much of attention. But guess what? They're doing as much as the star of the show flowers uh, in their subtlety, in their hum humility, I should say, to, to bow down and say, I don't have to be the star of the show. And often, I think that's where the most beauty is. Uh, overall is when we can be more humble. Okay, here I go getting philosophical again. But anyway, why not bring that into your art? Art is expressive. Art is not just mathematical. It is expressive and full of beauty and spontaneity. And it is deeper than just marks on a piece of paper or paint on a canvas. So I hope, you know, I hope in Monet Cafe, and I think that's probably been some of the success of the Monet Cafe uh, YouTube channel here. One, it's free, <laughs> which is awesome. And, uh, and again, I'm bringing this one free, even though I'm giving a little more to my patrons in some videos. I told you guys, I'm never going to forget to still, uh, I still give free content here, but sometimes I don't give all of the real-time footage like I'm doing in this video. But this is because I love you guys here in Monet Cafe. But anyway, I think that's been some of the success of the channel, is that it's not just about Here's your supply list. Uh, make this mark. Do this color. Uh, it is an experience. And also, too, with the Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. Wow. It's like the concept of Monet Cafe. It's not just me. It's, as a matter of fact, I am one of these flowers bowing down and being in, more in the background. That art group on Facebook is full of the most beautiful people encouraging, helping, growing, almost 10,000 members in that group right now, and still just as beautiful and intimate and caring as it was when there was 100 members. So if you're wanting to learn more and you need another free resource, uh, ask to join the Monet Cafe Art Group in Facebook. Um, so I we used to worry about it getting so large, and I thought, oh, it's going to lose some of its specialness, but it hasn't at all. We have painting contests. We have a monthly theme uh, each month, and we have um, different levels that can win prizes, and uh, it's just so 
uh, loving and caring and considerate of the beginner. So don't worry if you're just totally beginning in pastels. You are very welcome in that group. Now again, I mentioned my Patreon group. There's two reasons for that. One, one is that someone suggested I start a Patreon group because they, quite a few people did actually, and it just blessed my heart so much because making these, I've been making these free videos on Monet Cafe for over five years Literally, I sound like the postman now, through the rain, through the sleet, <laughs> through the hurricane that destroyed my home due to the flooding, through cancer, through my mother's cancer. So through all these things, I have, uh, it's been my therapy too. I don't want to sound totally selfless, but I've been bringing these free tutorials, I think over, I think maybe over 200 free videos here on the Monet Cafe channel. And so these people were so nice to say, hey, we'd like to give back. And so I set my Patreon level at $5 a month. And a lot of people just support me because it helps to keep these videos coming. And it's kind of like a just a beautiful support uh, to help these keep coming all over the world, like I said. And the second reason is that now I've had the Patreon page for less than, a, only about six months, I think. And it's really growing and it's so beautiful. But I've learned now too that I do love giving back to those people who are supporting the channel. And there is special content. Um, there are some giveaways um, of some of my original artwork. And uh, I give a little bit more into the science of art in that group. I have another video I'm, I'm working on putting together on the Fibonacci sequence. If you haven't heard of that in the golden ratio, it's fascinating. So forgive me while I talk through this, but I figure, hey, I got you guys, a <laughs> captive audience here. Um, and my husband's not here, so I'm kind of enjoying talking to you guys. But anyway, so there's a, there's a little bit more... Uh, content that's a little deeper and um, it's a it's more intimate obviously because there's less people and there are some people in my patreon group that aren't even on Facebook so it's really a neat way to communicate with you guys that aren't on Facebook or aren't in the Facebook group and uh, I also uh, you know some of you guys message me and I can answer your questions more specifically it's gotten in the Facebook group the the main one the Facebook art group uh, Monet Cafe Art Group. With so many members, I literally cannot attend to every single painting or, you know, sometimes people will tag me and ask a question and I'll try to pay attention to that, but it's gotten kind of big for me to do that. So my Patreon group is a way that I can give a little bit more intimate um, uh, content and interaction with some of you guys. I also have, when you become a patron of mine, I have a Facebook group just for my patrons, and that's Susan Jenkins' Patreon group. You can't join that one unless you are one of my patrons. And again, it's just $5 a month. You're welcome to keep doing the free Monet Cafe uh, videos. Again, I'll bring free ones just, I bring free ones all the time, but I'll bring um, more in-depth ones like this one every so often and always um, some sort of free video here but um, so you can you can hang out here as long as you want and if you do become a patron it's really easy and you also can cancel at any time there's no like period you have to sign up for or whatever so anyway it's a great group and it's helping me some of my goals by the way um, is to uh, we're finally my husband and I uh, it sounds crazy that after two years after the flooding of our home, and I mean total flooding of our home. Oh, if you saw the pictures, it's crazy. Um, it, two years sounds like, oh, you should really have your lives back in order after that. But it's it's still, I'm not going to give you the long version of that. It's still a little crazy. Um, and, and we're still not in our final home. But some of my goals are, I have a dream of having my uh, Monad Cafe larger studio on a piece of property where we are going to, there's a home already on that property, we're not living in it now, that we want to expand and make that our final home. And I want to build a Monet Cafe studio out there. I'd like to have it large enough to where I could have some master classes and uh, have like maybe 10 students or so every so often where we can come out and just have a whole Monet Cafe experience, have some lunch and art time and learning and and uh, a really great time. That's one of my goals. Another of my goals is to take the show on the road, so to speak. My husband and I, we do have a travel trailer and um, uh, and this uh, little small motorhome, he actually uses it for his business. And uh, so we love traveling. And so I would love, and I have learned so much with my um, video filming and everything. I'm very compact with it all and I've gotten to where I can do it um, pretty much anywhere. So I could literally have on the road, on location, 
painting, plein air, video tutorials, and take you guys with me on artistic adventures. Let me know in the comments. What do you think of that? I think that just sounds great. And maybe I could come to your town. How about that? <laughs> and maybe arrange some little get-togethers. That's one thing I've wanted to do, too, is have... Um, you guys um, maybe have some meetups. I know we have to be so careful in this internet world of who we meet and all that kind of stuff, but uh, within our group, it's pretty safe that if, if some of you guys are like, hey, who's in the, you know, Northern California area or, you know, Central North Carolina area or whatever that would like to meet up for some coffee and art. I mean, that's the whole concept of Monet Cafe. So anyway, that sounds cool. All right, I've blabbered on enough here. Now, do you see how I have gradually been adding the lighter values. I still want to keep those cool shadowy colors, even though they're a little lighter. See that little uh, periwinkle uh, blue that I'm adding there? Um, that is um, representing the shadowy parts of these flowers that I'm going to add to some, some of them, the brighter pinks, but they still have a little bit of shadow underneath certain areas. So I've got to keep mindfulness of that. All the petals are not pink. I think that's probably one of the signs um, very quickly of artwork looking more amateur is when we have, like, if it's a field of pink flowers, they're all just pink. Uh, again, this focus is consider the light, consider, which in turn means consider the shadows. Where are the shadows? And uh, so we've got to make sure we've got um, reserved or limited or precise applications of where the light is. Now, this is a little bit brighter pink. You see that? Still not my brightest pink I'm going to add, but I'm adding it um, with precision to areas where the light is. I'm looking, if the sun's coming kind of from the top right, some of it is kind of going over a little bit to the very top left-hand sides of some of the flowers. Um, so I'm just trying to think about where is that light source? And if you focus on that while you paint, I'm telling you, it's really going to make such a difference in your art. Again, I noticed that's too light for those uh, petals that are buried. They, they're still getting a little bit of light. Um, again, I didn't keep this painting exactly like the reference image, um, but I'm using it as a guide. But see, that's a darker value in some of those that are down a little deeper than the ones that I had up top. It's funny how when you look at it, it looks kind of like it's the same value. Um, you know, if you just kind of try to focus on the painting overall, but I know for a fact it's a darker value. If I'd have added um, that really light down to those flowers below, they're going to start to make the painting look flat. That's another thing that adding uh, variances in your values does for your painting. It gives depth to your painting. Everything looks like it's pasted on top. If you were just to take all of these flowers and make them like the same value pink, or even just two values, uh, it would look very flat. None of the flowers would have any depth or three-dimensional perspective or depth into the painting. Now, I'm reinforcing the darks here. Again, it was looking a little flat. I had lost some of my darks. So I'm just kind of, again, working in and around and amongst the petals. I'm being fairly precise, but not overly precise because that's going to make the painting look um, very fixed and uh, more like photorealism, which is not what I want to capture. All right, so I have really jabbered on enough here. And I've enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you have too. I hope you haven't minded some of my my deep meanderings. And um, so I will add a little music, but I'm going to keep the rest of this real time until I add the bees. And I think the bees are coming up soon, so I'm probably going to be talking to you guys in a minute. All right, here we go. More painting.
Now that I've added the stems and I've got everything pretty much in, I'm going to go ahead and work on the bees. And by the way, I probably worked a little longer on this little painting than I normally would. But again, it was just kind of my little artistic release and I was really enjoying it. But um, anyway, so it's time to add a little buzzy here. And I really liked the gestural quality of the bee. He's kind of like just curved and headed right towards that flower. This one looks more like a bumblebee than a honeybee, but it doesn't matter. These bees are so small that you're really just suggesting them. And just as we typically work with other parts of pastel painting, it's the same with bees. We want to get the dark in first. I've got a darker pastel that I'm just basically making just a couple of little marks, like two or three little marks. I'm kind of trying to make little black marks there, um, kind of curving it the way the bee was shaped. And uh, I am going to try to zoom in here again um, or more um, with my editing capabilities but it might be a little bit uh, pixelated after I get these black shapes and I want to add another little uh, bee right there kind of coming down towards one of the bottom flowers so I made him a little bit bigger okay now let me zoom in a little bit here so maybe you can see this a little bit better all right so sorry for that huge pastel <laughs> I'm showing you the color it's kind of similar of uh, one of the deeper orangey colors in the flower and my head's in the way in a minute it, it clears up but I'm doing a little curve shape over his back with that you'll be able to see when I add the next color okay you see how I just kind of covered up part of the black the kind of the middle part with that orangey color now I actually walk around the side so my head won't be in the way while I do this and I'm taking a little bit lighter orange now the past you see how teeny that bee is I'm putting a just I'm gonna talk because you can't see it I'm putting a little lighter over the orange now you see how it created that depth uh, perspective or layering you've got the black of the bee you've got the the orangey color and then you've got the little uh, more yellowy gold color on top now i'm going to add the little wings again this is suggestive i mean in real life when a bee is flying you don't see the details of a bee you just see kind of the energy the gesture and the suggestion now it focused on my head i was trying actually here to um, make a wing that had a little bit of a darker base to it but that particular pastel wasn't working so typically you just add a little lighter color pastel for the wing here i tried it again with a little um, purple and this bee's wings were actually darker in the photo than I'm going to make them. But now I've got my little light. And again, you can't even see it, but I'm just, his wings were kind of going forward in front of him. So I'm just making a little mark, boom, kind of energetically, boom. I think I make two of them, like my sound effects. And it kind of just gives that um, feeling that that bee is moving forward to the flower. And that's all there is to it. Uh, so I'm now going to do the same thing at for the other bee but I'm gonna zoom back out for, for that one. You see how it's a little bit larger. It's that black blob <laughs> down uh, low. Now I'm getting a little bit darker value orange for this one than I did the top one because he's more in the shadow uh, and the other one was in the light, which is why he has a little bit more uh, brilliant orange color. Now see that? That's not as gold or as yellow as the bee that I did in the sunlight. This bee's a little more buried down a little, more, a little bit more in shadow, not totally. So the same concept. I've really just got three values. I've got a dark uh, orangey color and a golden color. And I just gave him a couple of wings. And so that's really all there is to it. And you can even do them more suggestive than this if you wanted to add even some teenier bees. Now I had lost a little bit of the black. So that's one of the hardest things about this is uh, uh, working so teeny. But another suggestion on that, when, when working small, we learn to feel where the pastels are. If you've been painting a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They're so big and chunky, sometimes you literally can't see uh, behind the pastel where the mark's going. So you feel your way. You make a little teeny mark. You kind of feel where it is. And uh, you, you learn these subtleties and get better at it the more that you paint. I'm pretty much wrapping it up at this point. I'm getting a little bit more, this is a little bit of the negative painting that I actually talked about in another previous video where you're kind of carving in between things. I'm wanting to put a little bit of those cooler greens, kind of like some of those grasses down there are getting a little bit of the sun. And then at the end, I also wanted to add some brighter uh, petals, like some, uh, or not petals, some leaves or um, leaves kind of sticking out and catching a little bit of that sun. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to um, suggest a little bit of that to give a little bit more interest. And then I do add a little bit of uh, 
taller grasses to kind of bury some of those flowers in the front. So that's pretty much it for my cone flower and sweet little bee painting. And again, consider the light, not just in art, but in life. And know that you are valuable, whether you're the star of the show flower or the one supporting actor flower in the background. Happy painting, guys. And if you'd like to become a patron, there's a clickable link right here at the end of this video.